The Latin name of this ancient plant and now infamous drug is Cannabis sativa. While this plant has been an integral part of mankind's history for countless years, you will not find it in the history books. It is a plant with two faces. On the one hand, it supplies us with hemp, whose legitimate uses includes clothing, canvas, and rope making. And, on the other hand, it is the source of cannabis, the illegal psychotropic drug. This is the story of cannabis sativa, the plant with many, many uses. We are near Le Mans, in the west of France. Hemp has been grown here for hundreds of years, for both domestic and industrial use. Farmers here still use the traditional method of processing hemp, known as water retting. The stalks of hemp are extremely tough and resistant to rot, which is why it was traditionally used for ropes and canvas. Once harvested, hemp is left to soak in water before it is laid out of the fields to dry, so that the tough fibers may be more easily separated from each other. Even today, hemp fibers are broken down by hand, although an experienced hemp breaker can break from 100 to 200 pounds of hemp a day, this method still adds to the production cost. <laughs> Cannabis sativa is one of the most ancient plants cultivated by mankind Hemp processing was already developed in China 8,000 years before Christ was born. Hemp was first harvested for its seeds, a rich source of amino acids used for food. Then it was discovered that by breaking the stalks, they could use the fibers to make paper, as well as fishing nets and up to 5,000 hemp-related products, including, of course, textiles. The ancient Chinese called the country the land of hemp and mulberry. Mulberry leaves were used to feed silkworms, from which was produced the precious silk that only the rich and powerful could afford. Everyone else wore hemp clothing. Hemp is called ma by the Chinese, literally meaning plant with two forms, male and female. Hemp was also the first crop to be grown for use in war. The Chinese had originally used bamboo to make bowstrings. Then they discovered that the hemp fiber was stronger and lasted longer. Imperial decrees ordered that certain areas of the land would be exclusively used to grow hemp. An ancient legend says that hemp paper was discovered by Siloon, a scribe and unit of the imperial court. To publicize his discovery, Siloon pretended to die. He ordered that hemp paper should be burnt around his coffin. Then he arranged his own apparent resurrection and attributed it to the properties of his new invention. Ever since, hemp has been an integral part of the Chinese funeral ceremony known as Wu Fu, or the five levels of mourning. This code lays down, among other things, that the family wear different hemp clothes corresponding to their relation with the deceased. The Chinese jealously kept the secret of paper making for centuries. It wasn't until the 5th century that this knowledge was passed on to other countries, finally appearing in Europe in the 8th century. The word cannabis comes from the Babylonian canna, meaning cane or stalk. Bis meaning twice, with two forms or sexes, cannabis. Interestingly, it has the same meaning in Chinese. The word ma is a word from a completely different culture, yet it means exactly the same. Ma means the plant from which we take the fibers and which has two sexes. For good hemp, you have to look for rich, strong fibers, and these attributes are most marked in the male plant. The female plant, on the other hand, is a plant used in smoking, because all the psychoactive substances concentrate there. It is a plant with two sexes, two attributes. This is something completely fundamental. Cannabis has been used medically since the year 2800 BC, when Emperor Shen Nung founded the science of Chinese medicine. Wounds sustained in battle were bandaged in cannabis leaves. Today, doctors across the whole world are asking for the right to use cannabis as a treatment for pain, especially for cancer and AIDS.
I'm a cannabis user. I've been using cannabis since I was uh, approximately nine years old. Uh, I've had cancer ten times. Uh, I first occurred in my spine when I was two years old. I had a spinal fusion which fused my first five vertebrae together. I went on to have it from two to ten, nine times in eight years. Um, it occurred once again when I was 15. We treated it with radiational therapy. Um, through the years I've gone through radiational therapy, chemotherapy, and uh, numerous forms of uh, surgery. <laughs> and um, I stumbled upon cannabis once after radiational therapy use. It alleviated my dizziness and nausea, just the secondhand smoke, and it also increased my appetite. And um, right now I go around the world and I try to teach people about cannabis and its benefits and uh, its usages because I found it so beneficial in my situation. Cannabis was also grown in the foothills of the Indian continent. Today is Kazakhstan, Pakistan, Nepal and Kashmir. Having gathered the hemp harvest, Indian farmers used the water rutting process to break down the fibers, from which they made hemp flour, porridge or even popcorn. The seeds were also used for food and to make unsaturated oil. Cannabis is dedicated to Kali, the Hindu goddess, with two faces, destruction and reincarnation. So cannabis has been completely integrated in religious life on the Indian continent. Cannabis is consumed in a religious way to show devotion to the goddess, as we do ourselves with wine in the Holy Communion of the Catholic Church. Cannabis is also consumed socially. Indeed, you cannot imagine a wedding or a baptism without cannabis on the Indian continent. Hey man, mm -hmm. try some of this. It's absolutely dynamite. Oh yeah. The physical effects of marijuana. The first sensations may be felt instantly after having smoked some grass or an hour after having eaten it. Usually, you creep slowly into a stoned condition, inch by inch, sliding upward, but if you've eaten it, the effects may come upon you suddenly and strike you full force in the mid of a word. In the 3rd century AD, the Roman Emperor Gallion encouraged cannabis use, which he thought would make his people happy. In a declining empire, the Romans turned increasingly to the Oriental gods, Mithras and Zoroaster. Christianity was gaining ground, partly because it incorporated elements of these Oriental religions, but not the use of cannabis. The Roman Empire really went to war on hemp. The Roman Empire provides a very good example of the importance, the strategic importance, one might say, of hemp in any society in history. The Romans had hemp arsenals either side of the Alps. They had one in Ravenna and one in Vienna. And the procurator of hemp was a very important position in the Roman hierarchy. That is not to say that hemp was only used by the Romans to make war with. It had its place in all the aspects of hemp and all the aspects of fibers that you can imagine that it would have, i.e. it figured in clothing, shelter, food, defense, aggression, and medicine. Later on, Christians associated cannabis with the devil, and its use was supposed to be part of the satanic ritual. By 1484, Pope Innocent VIII declared that smoking cannabis was sacrilegious, and he promoted wine as the only Christian holy sacrament. It seems that knowledge of the psychotic